Some of the NFL's greatest names have had a rough season. Stars like Russell Wilson, Rob Gronkowski, Christian McCaffrey, and Michael Thomas have all been injured. With so many key players absent, we started thinking about the previous league injuries. While none have been particularly nasty this season, the league has seen some truly horrific injuries. In some cases, they were pure luck. So let's break down the 10 scariest injuries in NFL history. Let's dive right in. Up first, we have Destry Wright in 2020. Wright's NFL career ended in a preseason game for the Steelers against the Cowboys. Right ankle dislocated so badly that Wright was photographed by laying on his stomach. Right foot pointed up to the sky though. He had several surgeries and never played again. Up next, we have Bo Jackson in 1991. Jackson was a two-sport sensation who lost his football career in a playoff game against the Bengals in January of 1991. Jackson's hip was broken and dislocated when he was hit. He tried to reposition his hip but damaged blood vessels, causing him to lose his hip cartilage and would have to retire from the football game. He had a hip replacement and played two more years before retiring. Up next, we had Rashawn Johnson in 2013. Have you ever lost a fingernail and wondered why? Nor have we. Unlike Arizona Cardinal safety Rashad Johnson, who discovered he had lost his middle fingertip while covering a punt return against the Saints, I'm not even sure how it happened, Johnson stated the next day. If I had to guess, I'd say it dug into the turf there and was snapped back, breaking it. My glove wasn't torn or ripped, therefore it wasn't caught in a face mask or stepped on by a cleat. Johnson was able to return to work the next day after having surgery to remove the bone from his finger. Up next, we have Jeff Fuller in 1989. In six seasons with the 49ers, Fuller won three Super Bowls. His career ended in 1989 after a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit against the Patriots. Fuller ragdolled backwards, head bouncing against the turf. He shattered his neck and was partially paralyzed, unable to walk. He has since then regained enough mobility to walk, but none of it in his arms. Up next, we have Alex Smith in 2018. Smith's right leg twisted under him while being sacked by two Houston, Texas defenders, breaking his tibia and fibula. Smith got flesh-eating bacterial infection following the accident that nearly killed him. With 17 surgeries to restore his leg, Smith somehow returned to the NFL 20 months later before retiring in 2021. Up next, we have Johnny Knox in 2011. We see terrible hits on receivers after they catch the ball and recognize injuries. But sometimes, a simple football play can have a disastrous consequence. Johnny Knox caught a pass over the middle of the field and fumbled it late in the season. He dived to get the ball and connected with Anthony Hargrove, a defensive end in midair. Despite excessive recuperation, the talented young receiver's career was ended right then and there and he retired a year later. Up next, we have Napoleon McCollum in 1994. MNF was a must-see in the 1980s and 90s. Millions of Americans saw Raiders running back Napoleon McCollum suffer a career-ending injury. His leg hyper extended while he was tackled by Ken Norton Jr. The injury itself was awful, but no one recognized how bad it actually was. He never returned to football because of it. Up next, we have Joe Thiesman in 1985. This drama is well known. At the hands of a famous New York Giants linebacker, Lawrence Taylor, Washington Redskins quarterback, Joe Thiesman, sustained one of the most brutal injuries ever seen on live television in any sport. The Giants were not duped by Washington's flea flicker. Taylor pulled Thiesman down as many defenders could as they closed in on him, landing on his right leg. His leg snapped like a breadstick, but he felt nothing below the knee. Up next, we have Daryl Singley in 1978. This is our list's most heartbreaking injury. It reminds us of why players' safety, especially hits on defenseless players, is so important in football. Many of today's rules were influenced by Daryl Stingley's injuries. Jack the Assassin Tatum was a legendary Raiders hitter. He went on for the big hit in Stingley's in a preseason game against the Patriots. The strike on Stingley's shoulder rather than his head or neck proved catastrophic. Stingley's life was cruelly transformed as he was about to become the league's highest paid players. His spinal cord was compressed and two vertebrae were broken. He laid immobile on the field, unable to move his arms or legs. He died in 2007 from consequences of quadriplegia. Tatum never apologized to Singley or spoke to him after the hit. And finally, in the number one spot, we have Tom Crumery in 1989. Millions watched the Bengals battle the 49ers in Super Bowl XXIII, and on the 14th play of the game, Tim Crumery tried to tackle Roger Craig. Krumri's leg twisted beneath his weight, causing four different breaks in his lower left leg, only a skin holding his foot to his torso. Krumri returned to the training camp the next summer and did not miss a game for the next six years. Well guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.